Fort Brock's Crypto Podcast. Fort first... Brock's, 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 Brock's. The first one for 2023. Our hiatus, our holiday hiatus, took a little longer than we planned, right? Yeah, just a little bit, like uh, maybe like a month longer. Yeah, but it was yeah. so nice. I mean, I love doing the podcast, but it's work. Yeah. It, it, it's a lot of work and so that little hiatus we had for the holiday and then the fact that we're launching the production company with other podcasts so yeah yeah we little... got a we got a pretty good slate coming at you this year yeah we're i just want to say welcome back man oh thanks man it's always good to see you yeah. it's hard to see you though with those glasses but you look you look good you look this like is my, money. my shade cooler this is my uh fradas your fradas yeah yeah, yeah. oh damn it see Fake if, if, you, if you hadn't said that nobody know that you weren't like just from so money wealthy. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're like you got that fuck you money yeah like you're offensively wealthy well it's because i am in love <laughs> with your lady no just like everybody oh you know? gotcha so yeah you are you have zero malice in your heart yeah, yeah. that's one of the best things about you yeah selfishly though we do have some cool stuff coming from the production company at vocal visual yes we do yeah hospitality yeah, I mean, space music yeah. space so you're gonna see it if you we'll drop a few mentions every once in a while on upcoming yeah. podcasts and if you follow us on youtube you'll see those channels becoming a part of our friend yeah and, and possibly the crypto space as well but that's true can't can't, can't really talk too much about that just divulging. yet yeah we can't divulge yeah. everything just yet but you might notice some we're in some new digs yeah actually it looks good thank you this yeah. is my place uh my lady definitely likes to decorate so. I, I think it's awesome she just loves art she yeah. makes art so like some of the stuff is hers on the wall over behind you some's mine yeah. so mostly her friends and yeah so it's our friends it looks good yeah, yeah. see if anybody can see the star wars bong in my shot yeah yeah <laughs> so this is the best episode of 2023 it really yeah. is i mean so far yeah yeah because the first one of 2023 <laughs> so this is season two yeah season let's do two it. all right yeah. so i think it's yeah before we get into everything some disclosures oh, there we, we are go. not financial advisors wealth managers lawyers brokers or cpas nothing in this podcast should be construed as investment advice now that we have that out of the way we can dive headfirst into this what you should expect out of this episode is it's not the full year in review uh we're just gonna be talking about highlights or lowlights of 2022 in the crypto blockchain future web space <laughs> and kind of what's looking like 2023 is going to be about right i'm ready all right so here's some big stories again not to be a downer whatsoever that 2022 was such a a shit show in the crypto space but it it was it kind of was i yeah. mean it was a reckoning right but it needed to happen it's a I different mean, but most of these people if you listen to crypto vibes brought to you every week oh who does that uh my good buddy <laughs> oh, uh, he's Neil a good <laughs> <laughs> but you would know all these things, so I'm just throwing that out there. Like, if you want your weekly... That's true. Like, you want your news, go the Crypto Vibes. Thanks, My man. My boy Neil oh. will kick it to you. So. It did make it easier to do our due diligence for, for this particular episode, because yeah. all we did was go back and look at all the previous episodes of Crypto Vibes. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll give you that. But it was chaos, but it needed to happen, so it, it's a different crypto winter Yeah. than it was previously. Yeah, well, I mean, somewhat. I know, I know what you want to talk about. So we'll yeah. just kick it off with FTX. Yeah. Right, Sam Bankman Freed. Yeah. We're gonna well, you had work on a sh specific show talking about all things FTX. Because yeah. we could easily spend a whole show talking about FTX. I mean, Amazon has a series coming out about FTX. Apple's doing something with the story of FTX. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I mean, if we do a dive into it, I don't want to take it from like the the standard like like uh sam bank and sam friedman bank bankman free sbf baby yeah, don't SBF, you aren't show up on your acronyms yeah yeah sam sorry. bankman free bank friedman uh is bankman freed isn't it bank friedman he's not <laughs> gonna be that kidding. free no, no no man he's not free at all <laughs> uh no i kind of want to take it from a from a different place not really focus on him even though a lot of the focus will be about him but yeah anyway. because there was so many other people yeah. involved yeah it was so many but he was the figurehead yeah he 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 was the corral he was the leader and you'll see like a lot of people trying to 
push the blame onto him now, but well, when you're the CEO and founder, you're the first one through the wall. That's true. And yeah, I mean, you have to be accountable. I mean, look at Elizabeth Holmes with Theranos. Yeah. I mean, shit. Yeah. (laughs) It sucks because there's very few women who even are in the position that she was in and she shit the bed, man. Yeah. It doesn't help the situation. Yeah. But I mean, even if you look at the statistics and I read up on this more so, probably more so lately because selfishly, you know, I'm, I'm over 40 now. Yeah. A lot of people don't see success until they're in their 40s. And they say that your prime earning years happen after 40. Look at Stan Lee, Morgan Freeman, or yeah. uh, Samuel Jackson. Like a lot of things happen from after 40. Bill Campbell, trillion Brand, dollar coach. Brandon Heath. Brandon yeah. Heath. What are you talking about? <laughs> you're scared. winning already and you're in your 30s. <laughs> <laughs> you got my Fratos. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah. FTX was the poster child of 2022, right? Well, yeah, that definitely the poster child. Definitely. I mean, you had Luna. Yeah, you just had oh, a yeah. ton of big collapses. Don't jump ahead on us on I'm these sorry. headlines, yeah, baby. Yeah, no, but I mean, FTX definitely the main one, the the biggest one to date, I guess. But yeah, it's it, it's a catalyst of so many yeah. things. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, because Binance is involved, sort of, like all these other things were yeah. leveraged. Uh, if you look at Digital Currency Group right now, currently, and the shit show that they're in all the stuff going on with genesis like genesis it, it's like because the they are... digital currency group got rid of their wealth management arm yeah. and this happened maybe a week or two they announced it before shit really started flying and then you started looking behind what digital currency group owned they own coindesk yeah i mean that's one of the biggest news outlets in the crypto space right yeah. crypto blockchain space so you're wondering like oh my gosh are they changing the narrative buy it but coindesk for all of the shit that they're surrounded by or surrounded around right now they've been doing a good job reporting you know what i mean they've stayed really good as far in my opinion i mean but it's for their survival right like if they do not start reporting objectively not to say they didn't before but if they don't yeah they're gonna be clipped because the block was also funded by sam bankman freed oh you know what i mean and yeah it's weird you you get a marketplace like a coin exchange uh-huh and then you build up your your uh news arm so yeah you can spin the news how you want yeah that's interesting well who owns coin market cap who finance oh uh, yeah that's right you okay. know what i mean yeah, yeah. it's because we're it's it, this proves that we're still so early that yeah. the incumbents of cryptocurrency the most powerful exchanges chains yeah. anything are able I mean, to it, develop the the content portals that people use as validation incredible news source yeah i mean it it would be like if amazon bought uh the washington post people still yeah. read that they don't they only read like the first paragraph because everything costs money after that well i'm just saying because jeff bezos owns oh amazon i know and the washington post so <laughs> So it's valid, right? Because yeah. if this was Hollywood and this yeah. happened in, I don't quote me on this, if it was seventies or eighties, it might even happen later, but you used to have talent agencies also running the studios. Yeah. So when I read Bernie Burlstein's book, it talks about how that got eliminated. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because imagine the studio well, is now, also the talent manager. Yeah. Well now it's it in Hollywood, it's kind of going the other way where now the talent managers are becoming the producers so it's kind of coming full circle going back to that it is there is more control over yeah. so many things as it relates to the content yeah but it's just so damn yeah. it's awesome yeah. in a weird way if you're looking at it from a business perspective but if you're thinking about moving crypto forward to help humans coexist yeah. humans function it's yeah man shit's got to get cleaned up we need regulation there needs to be yeah. some accountability. I mean, yeah, a lot, a lot of people I've been saying like from the Luna crash, like this might be a good thing because some regulation does need to happen in the space. I don't think like full on regulation. I, I don't know. I'm, <laughs> what does I'm, that mean? It's yeah. gonna, it, they don't yeah. half ass it when they start yeah. regulating. Let, let's get into this in our FTX episode. Okay. Let's go. Let's move on. Move, moving on. Okay. Yeah. So Ethereum merge, that was a big story for yeah. 2022. Huge. I mean, 
and more personally for us, it's we were in GPU mining. We still are. Yeah. I see a lot of places where we're still going to be viable. We're we're fortunate because of our electricity because our situation we're still able to create a profit. It's not as high of a return. Yeah. But it's still a return. Nowhere near as high. But nowhere near as high. Yeah. And still still waiting on that like that the true winner because we thought maybe after the merge okay we'll we'll see who's going to fight it out to like become the top coin to like turn a profit on yeah, profit proof of work per, like kilowatt basically and yeah. i had my money on raven still do but uh i i think it's more of like a long-term play now it's it but i always kind of felt it was anyway yeah yeah I, mean, I think it's more like the the coins you mine today are you're hoping are going to be worth more so that's why you're you're doing it it's yeah. not so much about the cash flow yeah because mm. But it's we originally to... had people who were doing it for cash flow yeah. because the numbers made sense. Yeah. And you could still do it for cash flow. It's just the return is more in the 3% range annualized if you're looking at it that way through like a real estate lens. Yeah. But yeah, yeah we... so the Ethereum merge didn't, didn't break Ethereum, which no. people somewhat thought it would. People thought there was a lot of misconceptions about it, which we went through in our Ethereum merge podcast, but... It was a big deal in 2022. I mean, it dominated a lot of core crypto conversations. Twitter, crypto Twitter had nothing but interesting things to say about it, right? Merge, 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 <laughs> merge, merge, merge. Well, Shanghai, London. Uh. The biggest thing we discovered when we were talking about it on that podcast, the Ethereum Merge podcast, was yeah. Anthony Pompliano even pointed out back in 2020 that where were the nodes being hosted for Ethereum? You know? Yeah. It's primarily AWS. Yeah. So is not really decentralized. Yeah. So that part was eye opening. Yeah. And well, I mean, it's not fully. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if Ethereum is going to be the winner. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, you it, see the price since the merge has gone down. And it, well, everything's gone down. True. But I don't think that was all like even before the the FTX crash, like it went yeah. down like. 500 bucks like a third of its actual value because it as somebody pointed out to me that it like after the merge you really didn't have anything for that coin to look forward to so it, it got like this hype and this bump because everybody was buying it up so that they could actually like in in anticipation in you know, the prospect that it was going to shoot up in price after the merge but since there was nothing else for it to look forward to it just went down in price, down and down and down. I know a lot of people that basically did those three, three times short coins mm -hmm. on it and made a, a lot of money off of just flipping those coins. Yeah. I mean, there is just a business for that, that. Like it's going to go down. For people who understand yeah. how to short things and don't mind yeah. the risk reward mm -hmm. ratio, it's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, they also have Shanghai upgrade coming up here in 2023. Yeah. But it's based upon the value that it's creating for those who use the technology yeah. because Ethereum is its own Ecosystem. component. Yeah. It's its yeah. own component, but ether is the actual coin. And if it continues to be bloated gas fees, bloated use and yeah. minting, it's highly I, expensive. I will say that it's not, it's uh, what it's not as expensive anymore. When you say not to, as expensive, give us a point of reference. Okay. So I sent $150 to hive for okay. our, uh, rigs basically in order to keep them yeah, running yeah. so you have to send them uh ethereum die what basically tether some some ethereum based token okay uh that's the only ones they accept so like when the gas fees were super bloated it used to cost somewhere around like 20 bucks to get it out of uh whatever exchange you wanted to get it out of mm -hmm. like that was the starting point this time it was a buck oh to send it there you go. Yeah. So th there are some upsides. All right. Thank goodness. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, they need it if they want it to continue mm -hmm. to be utilized and people using it. Because I mean, we're going to be talking about an upcoming episode. Polygon, I yeah. feel like, is a huge sleeping competitor. Yeah. But we'll dive into that a little more. But some of the other headlines for this year is adoption, in our opinion. We actually our next episode is talking about crypto next adoption. <laughs> What'd you say? Hold up. Hey, yeah. Oh my gosh. 
No. You, you, it's because you're hanging around so many rappers lately and hip hop yeah. artists or yeah. hip hop producers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're feeling Just it, huh? One, no. Can yeah. you sing it again? Hold up. Hey. hey. <laughs> That's all I got, though. But the adoption signal I'm referring to specifically right now is the fact that people are putting so much money, so many resources yeah. into all things crypto technology, NFTs, blockchain. You know what I mean? Yeah. And future yeah. web. I'm tired of calling it Web 3, Web 5. I'm just calling it Future Web moving forward because... Oh, putting the stake in the ground. I'm putting a stake in the ground putting because it's never going to stop evolving. Yeah. Like, So what are we going to do, Web 8, 18? You know what I mean? At some point? It's just Future Web, man. Yeah, Future Web. Because we're always moving forward. We're going to like progress that. this. I like that. As long as there's a buck to be made by making it something new, a new iteration of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Future Web. But that's something that even throughout the shit show of 2022 companies individuals organizations investors continue to put a ton of resources and capital behind all things crypto yeah. blockchain the technology you know what i mean yeah that's a good thing yeah that's a signal that's a signal that i like to focus on yeah and try to the fud fear uncertainty and doubt that's what helps me sleep at night yeah is knowing that there's people out there with a lot more on the line for this shit to roll than myself yeah i like that that's a good outlook <laughs> it's a mindset it, it really is some of the meltdowns that were big this last year celsius celsius i mean luna terra luna i mean there's it's a longer list i mean yeah. we're not going to dive into everybody and we're not trying to blow up anybody's spot FTX. any more than they have themselves well yeah yeah but it just shows that the business models the way that they were structured were just not structured well I mean, it was all about leveraging. Well, Luna Terra, not so much, but like, like, I I love exchanges. I think they're they're a great starting point for anybody. Like the reason why there used to be the Coinbase bump mm -hmm. and the Coinbase controversy, yeah, that, are, that happened because they have because, insider trading allegations on well, that. Well, yeah, but the like just the the ease to get these coins and like that helped a with adoption and b with like like getting it out there to the world like it did ramp up speculation and probably pro propped up the price on a lot of these coins but then what happened is that they would take this newfound wealth and then leverage it to the fucking max and then when the house of cards comes blowing down like it all I, it's just it's insane what these people were doing like they were leveraging the either the current value or the future value of the coin. Yeah. So if a coin is worth a thousand bucks. Yeah. And you're borrowing seventy percent of that thousand bucks, and then the coin goes down to a hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. That's bad. And here's the thing: crypto's already highly highly volatile. Yeah. We were reached out by a couple different lending companies in the space. Remember, yeah. early in 2022 for the podcast about yeah. sponsoring and maybe doing some ads and even having some guests on from the space. But my biggest question to them was before doing any of that was what happens when a note gets called due? So somebody is leveraging, let's say yeah. $700 out of a thousand dollar crypto value. What happens when the coin goes down to a hundred bucks? Yeah. Does that trigger the note due? And they're like, yes, it can't go past a certain portion of LTV loan to value ratio. Yeah. And I'm like, but here's the thing, crypto in 24 hours can go from $1,000 to a hundred bucks. Yeah. And then right back up, if not past it. So does that trigger the note called due or is there a time frame? But because there was such ambiguity and not a clear line of how it was going to be done, I was like, yeah, we're, we don't want to take your sponsorship money. We don't want to talk about it with yeah. you that way. Cause it's not right. It's not good business in my opinion. Well, yeah. I mean, we'd be fucking over, uh, anybody who's following us or listening yeah and also like it, that is one thing that i look forward to in regulation is like the predatoriness that uh comes with like the wild west attitude and mentality in crypto like any sort of regular like if we had sort of a frank dot acts level dodd frank dodd frank dodd frank uh, yeah dyslexic it's all right sorry. If we had any sort of protection like that, like I know that's not great for speculation and like business, but like it's good for basically like if this were were FDIC insured, 
then a lot of people wouldn't be losing their ass, as much of their ass on this FTX collapse or this Luna collapse. I like maybe on the Luna, but yeah, but do you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it would help, I think, in the space eliminate it, some of the bad actors. That's the hope, right? Because I do. Yeah, I appreciate that we live in a permissionless environment right now because true, we true. can just create and yeah. it doesn't stifle innovation. That's true. And people really didn't start get handing out the fines and regulation cracking down until they, we fucked it up ourselves. And what's what sucks about this is just like anything, anything that goes with the stereotype usually is done by a small portion of the the community or group. Yeah. But it causes such a black eye or a problem that it becomes the rule as opposed to the exception. Yeah. You know what I mean? So a few people create these bad business models that a lot of people suffer from. And it's like, well, not everybody is looking at it that way. It just so happens that the people who got involved in it first saw the opportunity, but maybe don't have maybe even the business savvy to do it ethically. Right. Yeah. It just sucks because it is, it's causing a problem for those who probably have better business models, but are going to be hindered in the face of certain regulation and guidelines. Yeah. Uh, but having said that, <clears throat> all of it ha still has to be accountable. Yeah. And when you talk about Dodd-Frank, as some of you might be listening, I deal a lot with real estate and very familiar with Dodd-Frank. Yeah. There are parts about it I like and parts about it I absolutely loathe. Yeah. But at the end of the day, when you talk about predatory lending, safe act, usury laws, I mean, those are in place to safeguard. But here's what's crazy about even Dodd-Frank. Yeah. Let's talk about personal property. If you're financing your own personal property, you can only finance at a certain rate and you put yourself in a bad position if you go too much over prime. Mm -hmm. But if you are a credit card company on unsecured debt, you can charge 20, 30%. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, huh? So it's not even secured by any type of collateral? And yeah. you're able to charge these absorbent rates. So even then Dodd-Frank doesn't do it right. But uh, so well, I, I think that's why they're able to charge those rates is because it's not secured by anything. And it just baffles me on so many levels. But again, yeah, it, all this is going to continue. Hopefully we find a better way, but to continue yeah. talking about 2022, yeah, NFT royalties and the market itself. Now, yeah. I've seen a few reports on this. It's been on different sites, uh, decrypt.co, Blockworks, I mean, Coindesk, they've all shared links to different reports, but it looks like 2022, while it was lower in a sense for overall growth, it still was bussing. Like it was hard. It was doing really well in the NFT space. Yep. It wasn't quite as big as it was, so to speak, but it still grew. It wasn't as big at all. Yeah. It only seemed that way. So you got to go to these reports. We'll put the well, links I mean, in our show notes. Okay, yeah. We'll do that. But I'm just saying, like, definitely the price, like, of NFTs dropped out. So I know there might be more. The volume trade. Was, yeah, that's what so I'm saying. So more volume. However, like, the price per NFT, like, the, the average went down a lot. But there's still, again, the signal of adoption. Because yeah. look at Nike. Yeah. You know, Adidas or Adidas. Yeah. It just depends on if you want to say it the way it supposedly was created. Yeah. You have Mattel. Like the corn song. Corn? Yeah, with the K. Yeah. They did that. I always think of Freak on a Leash. About sex and all. Anyway. <laughs> I always think of Freak on a Leash. Oh, yeah. Because that video was pretty dope when it came out. Remember it was the slow, you was falling slow moving bullet? No. That was going through. Maybe we should turn that into an NFT. What? What? <laughs> I'm just kidding. But you have all these companies going direct because you yeah. don't, you don't need marketplaces. Mm -hmm. I mean, because these brands are able to use the hindsight of a rearview mirror to say, why do we need a marketplace? Nike doesn't need a marketplace to sell their NFTs. Yeah, they already have a concentrated group of people coming to their website. So Dot Swoosh yeah. is getting ready to drop, and it's going to be really interesting because supposedly. They're creating a lot of their assets for in real world items to yeah. live in other metaverses. Yeah. And it would be dope if there was interoperability so that the, you could ultimately wear it in Fortnite. Yeah. You could wear it in what sandbox or whatever other metaverse environments that there'll be. Yeah. So we're going to talk a little bit about metaverses here, but the royalty side of NFTs came under heavy fire. And it was uh, Bobby Kim of the hundreds who really garnered a lot of press because he was going to do a Wait. drop for the hundreds okay. of 
their NFTs recently, towards the end of 2022. But he pulled back on OpenSea to say, hey, you're not honoring the royalties of the, on the resale. So he's like, I don't want to launch it on OpenSea. And so he wrote this whole piece, a blog post. And because he has that kind of juice. What do you mean he wasn't honor? They weren't honoring it. You could resell without having to pay the royalty. Oh, okay. It was optional. And it's becoming more of an optional thing. Like you don't have to honor resale royalties in a lot of ways. Yeah, right? You, huh? you got that face. The, the fuck? The fuck? Yeah, you, you have that like, face. Say like, oh, I don't want to pay a royalty on this? Yeah. Or you're like, I don't, wanna, I don't want to pay a royalty on this as the seller. I don't get what... what... If you and I own an NFT right now yeah. and we bought it through OpenSea, there's nothing mandating that if I buy it from you and you send it to me from your wallet to my wallet that we have to honor the royalty. Oh, like if it's like a an off offline purchase, it, it there's no way to govern or mandate that a royalty is paid. I see the pause. Yeah, no, I'm just saying like if you go through, like, I it, an off chain transaction, I could see not paying a, a royalty for, mm-hmm. but an on chain one. I would imagine that you would have to, right? You would think. Okay. So again, there'll be links to the stories in our show notes. Shady OpenSea. Okay. It's, it's not Shady. just Open. No, OpenSea. No, I'm just kidding. Since this whole thing that happened with Bobby Kim and the Hunters NFT, they've come out to create systems in place to help safeguard the royalties on resale. But there's still marketplaces out there that make it optional. So when you're minting it, you have the option of saying that royal royalties have to be included or not. But even still, even if we, if, if you have an NFT in your wallet and you want to send it to me in my wallet, mm-hmm. we don't have to go through the marketplace to make that resale happen. Can we change the name of them though to like nifties or something? There's a, there's a site called nifty, you know oh, that? Okay. But anyways, yeah. So it's a big point of contention during yeah. 2022. So, Another big story in 2022, it's not directly crypto or blockchain, but the hope is that it will be, yeah. was Twitter being purchased by Elon Musk. That was such a heavy story. <laughs> yeah. It was a big deal, right? Yeah. I mean, so here's the thing. I like the meme that said, uh, I think somebody put it on Twitter. It's like, how, to go, how do you go from the richest man in the world to the second richest man in the world mm-hmm. by Twitter? <laughs> My thought process is this, is that we're all armchair quarterbacks in this situation. Yeah. And we didn't buy Twitter. He did. So for all of its pluses or minuses that may end up happening. Yeah. He owns it. It's his. It's a private company. Yes, he has a fiduciary duty to those that he borrowed money from, that invested with him. But it is a private company now. Yeah. So therefore. Tesla stock owners. ah, So who's been very outspoken about this very topic has been scott galloway if you know who that is prof g podcast pivot podcast with kara swisher i i like scott most of the time but yeah he's been very outspoken about this whole thing i think he makes a couple of quite a few great points about elon musk and his decisions and how it affects everything else that he does yeah because he is he's a figurehead in those places whether it's spacex tesla solar i mean there's so many things he has his hands in that at a certain point in time, you have to make the decision of being somebody like him with the level of influence that he has. Like, how do you want to conduct yourself? Yeah. I mean, so much of the time, people feel like they become uh, a curated version of themselves. They're not even true to their own form. But he he's a smart enough man to know what he's doing. Yeah. Everybody goes Dave Chappelle every once in a while, but come on. Yeah, for sure. I do. <laughs> I, I mean, like Twitter is one of those places that I go to look for quick information and headlines on on uh on the crypto space in the crypto space yeah uh you can do a lot of research on any certain coin by just hitting money <sighs> money sign and then searching the coin name after it because or dollar sign yeah, sign. yeah i know yeah, what you yeah. mean but, yeah. th- but i mean it, and and you had the dogecoin bump after he bought it you see that <laughs> little doji well more recent news yeah, that, from the Crypto Vibes podcast was that Tesla held on to the majority of their Bitcoin 
Yeah. Throughout this whole this whole thing shit show, you know. So that's also good to know. I heard that they they sold some of it. Or they did most of it. Okay. They did liquidate. Well, it was an article that came out that was in last week's Crypto Vibes podcast. So it was. The, these are not things that we're fabricating. We're just reporting on others telling the story. So if they're fabricating it, I guess we're just spreading that story. You yeah. know, it's. I hope with all things that are happening and all the ways we consume media that there's a way that we can validate yeah. everything moving forward. But another component or another big story of 2022 was regulation. Like DAOs got hit hard, like yeah. Oki DAO. Yep. Even that company Fractally, which under full disclosure, I do work with yeah. Fractally. They were working on a governance system and they had it tokenized, but they had to change and pivot to what they're going to be doing as a business model simply because DAOs came under heavy fire. Yeah. Okie DAO was one of the first that really got hit with it hard. Han Ventures, Katie Han, who used to be with Andreas and Horowitz, put out a couple great articles in her team and they referenced it as enforcement only. Like all these regulating agencies are going at this in a very non-constructive way, which I happen to agree with, but yeah. that was big in 2022. Okay. Any thoughts about that? What are your thoughts about governance, DAOs? Regulation and enforcement? No, I, no, not I mean, so much. Well, yeah, I mean, regulation we, enforcement, we, but. We talked about it on the, the DAO one. I, I think they're interesting. They're a really cool concept, but like, hey, I don't think we've seen it to their potential yet. No. Or, or I mean, I guess like a, every system of governance has its flaws. So like DAOs being decentralized, like we've seen the flaws in those or in that system so far. Well, it was, was really quick to get there. But if you can eliminate some of those in your in your ability you know well so so i was in a meeting the other day with a company that's put a lot of money behind building out a metaverse yeah and they i one of my biggest questions because they talked about how the they were setting up DAOs for the community to enter engage with the content i'm i'm creating broad strokes because i don't i'm not trying to identify certain yeah pieces of this company so i'm keeping it very broad but the example is this, is that when I asked about their legal due diligence on how they were going to handle the DAOs inside this metaverse for the community to vote on content or how things proceed, yeah. and then when they vote that they're incentivized with tokens, I just ask, what is your legal done? What's your legal plan to handle all this? Because there's so much scrutiny happening right now. Yeah, And the response I got, and this is something I've received from more than one company who's put in a substantial amount of money behind building out things such as a metaverse or their own blockchain, is they're like, oh, we have a great legal team. And I'm like, that's not an answer. Yeah. Like, what's your plan? Oh, well, we have, and then they can always seem to continuously go on the fact that they have this great legal team. Yeah. But they never flat out answer the question. And I'm not asking it to blow holes in their business or say they don't know what they're doing it's like i don't want to see anybody fail fail if yeah. they don't have to like yeah, yeah. you know what i mean yeah and so it comes from a good place these questions and it's worrisome to me that people who have a substantial amount of capital to throw at these things for an unknown result i mean obviously they're buying the wonka ticket in their mind but they don't have a plan of how they're going to deal with it legally that's a cause for concern yeah so if you have people who startups who are really just scraping by to build out something that's cool, they probably don't have a good legal plan too. I mean, I've met a few of those startup mm -hmm. founders and they have some really great stuff, but if regulation comes in on them right now, it'll kill the entire business. Now as a startup, you have time. Anybody who's put money in, it could be lost. Yeah. But in the case of these people who are super wealthy that are putting it, they just burned money. It's almost like they're following Elon's example. Like, hey, we just want to start a campfire, you know, and yeah, we have the greatest kindling. Not, not a campfire, a bonfire. A bonfire. <laughs> <laughs> this but, isn't just something to warm your feet around. This is like, <laughs> I want to burn the world down, like I'm spending money. But even enforcement. 200 billion. <laughs> enforcement has picked Wouldn't their own. Be? Yeah, right. They picked the worst battles, like Kim Kardashian getting fined. Yeah. For promoting crypto. Yeah. No disrespect to her because she's created an incredible brand, incredible revenue stream. 
Yeah. Her, her mom is the best version of Joe Jackson, Don King, yeah. uh, promoters of this time. Like she's pretty amazing on how she's curated that lifestyle yeah. in order to drive revenue. Well, I mean, but, you, did you see the Lamar Odom uh, interview? No. With TMZ? No, it no. It was like a, like, for, I, I didn't either, but oh, okay. I read an article about it. Okay. And like, he does discuss how, like, she's the ringleader. She's, yeah. she's the one that makes it happen. Yeah. This yeah. is curated. This is not an accident. Yeah. But having said that and given them their love and their props who the hell actually thought that kim kardashian wasn't promoting what she posted about crypto you know what i mean yeah it, it was come a promotion. on it was a promotion like yeah. there was no ifs ands or buts about it for so sure. the fact that they set her down with a fine for it it's kind of like i we get what you're trying to do you're trying to make an example and this yeah. and that but uh, didn't they try to make an example of a couple others as they well? did they tried yeah. to do they went after a bunch of people i mean i even think kevin o'leary on to oh yeah in front of congress i, I know you couldn't wait to talk about kevin. no no i can't yes talk you about can him. we'll talk about him on uh, on the, the ftx, FTX. Yeah. okay fine yeah but just know this listeners brandon definitely has a bone to pick with mr wonderful mm, mm, mm. <laughs> so yeah, no nah, not a bone but yeah kind of a bone but, you're just pointing out an observation yeah Okay, we'll save it. Yeah. We'll save it. So next up, Board Ape Yacht Club. Throwing Binance under the bus. <laughs> he bet the wrong horse, and he's just pissed about it, man. <laughs> he is, yeah. Who doesn't okay. kick rocks, okay. man? Board right. Ape Yacht Club. Board Ape Yacht Club. Do you ever call it? Do you ever call it uh, Bay C? Bay C. Bay I kind of like Bay C. I mean, they're out in the space now, and they have their podcast, The Fucking Metaverse. Yeah. I've listened to a few episodes. It's fun if you if you're into crypto and you're into this space it's fun yeah the snoop dogg episode awesome alexis ohanian episode awesome it was really cool hearing those stories but wait snoop dogg goes on the actual podcast yeah talks about his like oh how he's created his own brand because he's one of the very few who've taken the concept of buying an nft and leveraging that ip yeah. to build a brand around so well, him and his it, son yeah have and created also uh eminem's basey so they did that that, uh, that music video, video yeah. yeah so they're it's actually a great song by the way they got hated on because obviously the graphics in it weren't holding up to something like jamie hewlett standards on gorillas but here's the thing yeah i get it but what Whatever. snoop dogg's doing with his son and they're creating this brand out of the NFT characters that they purchased is yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Because it's showing it's it's showing you what could be done, right? Yeah. And I know it's in the face of a JPEG and all that bullshit, but here's the thing. They're creating they're literally creating revenue out of thin air. Yeah. And it's amazing, wildly inspiring. Well, so instead of it, hating it was it, expensive air. It was expensive air. Yeah. I mean, they, fair enough. <laughs> okay, good point but that's like buying canned air from like tibet or something you made me think of space balls when you say that having somebody fly it in from like straight there from the top of uh, everest or have something. have you seen space balls uh it's been a long time mel brooks movie yeah it's been a long long time well, when i was younger. they have cans of instead of perrier it's perrier oh okay uh, yeah. yeah i mean if you think about it mel brooks is way ahead of his time in that way yeah for sure <laughs> But having said that, Board Ape Yacht Club, they have the other side. They have their own metaverse. And they're selling land. Yeah. Think about land. If you take what we do in real life, yeah. as far as what we do on the land to increase its property value, it's all going to happen in a digital way, too. It's so awesome. Because think about it. Who's going to lend against that land? Who's going to leverage the value of that land to buy more virtual shit? I wonder if we're going to be able to go bankrupt in the metaverse and still be wealthy in real life or can it be even the opposite to where you might see somebody on the street kicking cans but they have an iphone and on that metaverse environment that, that they're a billionaire <laughs> you know i don't know yeah. i'm so curious no I, I yeah i i think if you're trying to build wealth in real life in irl <laughs> what about it you see your mind's going in some directions yeah well i'm just saying like if if you have that drive and the tenacity to try and build wealth in one i don't know if you if it doesn't like 
compute in a different way. People are having a hard time wrapping their head around what a metaverse will be because there's yeah. nothing working the way that it is envisioned right now. That's true. I mean, look at all the money that, I know it's a joke that a lot of people have said, but look, they've spent billions of dollars and they still can't give you legs in meta. Oh, really? You know what I mean? Legs? Yeah, it's legs. It's just like floating torsos? Basically. I haven't, I haven't checked it out at all, but that's it, hilarious. It, it, it's, it's so funny. And, and I've said this time, and I say this to a lot of, because I do a lot of consulting. I try to let people know, I go, no matter how technical we get in the weeds in these conversations and how strategic we get in all the things that we're doing in our messaging, nothing will replace the fact that even if we had the cure to cancer, we still have to brand it. Yeah. People would have to be have a branding experience to even take it because they won't do it in their best interest. Yeah. Like if you put the cure to cancer inside a nice Tiffany's box and there's a whole unboxing experience, you're able to upload it to Instagram stories, more people will take it. It's just the way it is. Yeah. So, but I digress. Moving forward in highlights of 2022. So that you're, you're trying to pitch yourself as Meta's marketing uh, uh, advisor? What? What? If, uh, no. if you're out there, Zuck, I got the dude for I got you. The dude. Right <laughs> you're here. funny. So... Celebrities launching their own projects. There was Project Venkman by Bill Murray. Yeah. Bill Murray's son, I believe, you know, did it. Uh, it I like it. It yeah. didn't do real well. Oh, yeah. I mean, in the grand scheme of things. And then you have Kevin Hart, and he was, I like when, what he's attempting to do. When Ghostbusters Afterlife came out, they were selling the Stay Puff Marshmallow oh, Men right. uh, NFTs. Those I, were interesting. See, there's so many celebrities. These are just a few, right? Yeah. yeah. People see the value. I mean, even Snoop Dogg is wanting to put every all of Death Row yeah. onto NFTs. Wow. And people are like, oh, that's just a JPEG. No, it's not. No. It's a way for him to distribute his music solely and assign the ability to play. Because imagine, and I think we talked about it on one of the other podcasts if that we Drake had. Would have if done Drake that. would have yeah. done this, yeah, yeah. Spotify wouldn't even had to call to license it because it would just be a given. It would you would just have a built-in rate card because however many times this song gets played, that metadata gets written to the blockchain attached to that NFT, and therefore it charges you accordingly. And it automatically pulls out the royalty for the artist himself. Like a lot of the technology on this functionality. Yeah. What are you giggling? I'm just giggling about your future web. If you would have future webbed it. Oh, I'm telling you. Yeah. Like and Spider-Man. I'm telling you, future shit. web, baby. Yeah. Okay, but in 2022, yeah, the case for decentralization was brought to light because of the Russian-Ukraine conflict, right? Yeah. So people were up in arms that Russians could still access exchanges and spend money that way, even yeah. though certain resources were shut off from them. And it really begged the question, you know, okay, it's, it's decentralized. Well, I mean, yeah, but we've known about that for a long time because that that large hacker group that holds people ransom. Yeah. Uh, there's one in uh, North Korea and then one in uh, Russia. Okay. That's, a, that's, that's what they do and they live off of stolen crypto and stuff. So it's a, it's just how they go about it. What cat is that? That's a Gandalf. Gandalf. So and what you're hearing is Gandalf in his cat box. Sorry about that uh, for you guys. What are you talking about? People love okay. animals, I'm yeah, sure. And then the fact that your cat's names are Gandalf and what, Merlin? Merlin and Gandalf. Yeah, they're yeah, wizards. Yeah. yeah wizard you had cats. Dumbledore too, right? Well, but he um, passed. Uh, no, we gave him back. Oh, you didn't like Dumbledore? Well, he he had separation anxiety. So oh, gotcha. I gave him back to his mom. Fair enough. To hang out with. So. To go back to Hogwarts. Yeah, go back to Hogwarts. <laughs> so, but yeah, the decentralized but yeah. decentralization thing. It's it's. Everybody's like, yes, decentralized. That's why we love crypto. But then when an extreme case of it is shown, people get, whoa, whoa, wait. But they shouldn't have, at you know what I mean? So that's the thing about a lot of the technology and these things that we want. We think we want them. And then when something isn't necessarily the way that we want it to be, we question it all or we go the opposite way. And it's, yeah. you got to be more even keeled than that. Yeah, that's interesting. Another big story in 2022, I think it's big. Maybe other people be like, really? You're, you're talking about Aptos? They're a new platform of NFTs, new technology. Yeah. I think they're doing it well. They definitely have momentum. Time will work its magic and see how valid they are in the space. But they are seeing a lot of adoption, especially heading out of 2022 into 2023. Yeah. So 
Another big one is Apple's place in the market. So Apple. They, they have a place right now? Whew, I mean, think about the apps, right? Yeah. OpenSea app. Oh, any, yeah. Oh. Or any app oh, that yeah. you're they're, able to they're buy an Epic NFT. Epic Games and stuff. Yeah. Well, Epic Games has always had a bone to pick with Apple. Yeah. I mean, they're one of a few that have had a long skirmish with Apple. And there, there's the antitrust suits and everything. And it's because of Apple's take percentage of the sale. And we were talking about it before on one of the other previous podcasts, but Apple charging you 30% if you buy an NFT through their platform, that's that's a lot of money, man. Yeah. It's I, I understand and I've always been an advocate for the fact that they created this ecosystem in this world. And yeah. if we want, we don't have to play in it. It's becoming more of not an option, but there's a way that you can do a workaround with web and even Twitter, right? If you want to subscribe to, I forget what feature set it was, but you could either pay a certain amount if you subscribe through the web, and then it would be a little bit higher if you purchase through an Apple native app because they have to pay that commission. Yeah, they have to, the, okay. I mean, anybody who buys through the app, I mean, it's you kind of like got to be pissed. buying art at a gallery versus buying it straight from the artist. You could call it that way, yes. Yeah. Very much so, right? Yeah. There's a lot of things in this business model that are not new business models. It just so happens that they have such a dominance in the space yeah. for the hardware that now it looks like they are going to be changing some of these rules in the face of all the backlash that it's been having lately. Because the argument that I had was, okay, they have the Carvana app. Yeah. You could buy a phone or a car through yeah. your phone. Wouldn't one that... One of those strange, like, uh, what? Ready Player One buildings that they've built all over the freeways. Those things are dope. So when you think about the metaverse, yeah, a lot of people go back to Ready Player One. And yeah. it's a really cool story, well yeah. told story. Yeah. And it gives you visuals now because the movie was done, right? And the movie's dope. I enjoyed it. I love that movie. Shout yeah. out to you, Mr. Speaks. <laughs> Steve, call me. So this is a perfect time to segue into one of the big things of 2022. And Do you was, think he's going to call me? Because I gave him a shout out? Yeah, but because you have your ringer off, I don't think you're going to get the call. Ooh. But you'll just miss it. But I'm sure you guys will get on text or maybe you guys get on yeah. Telegram. Yeah, okay. So <laughs> the story that was supposed to be all of 2022, but it really didn't deliver the same that it was the hype of, was the metaverse. Yeah. Yep. The metaverse didn't really deliver in 2022. I mean, Facebook changed its name. To meta. And they put out awesome, uh, what do you call them, commercials for Super Bowl. They did put out some really good yes. commercials. The commercials were great. But it wasn't the reality of what you were using yet. yet. Yeah, not yet. I think we'll get there. Yeah. A lot of reasons why I think it'll be great when we get there. The problem of it is, is that, and again, this goes back to even what's happening in crypto right now. There's too many people doing things without building the infrastructure. Yeah. I'm a big fan of protocol, yeah. big fan of building those base, those foundational pieces that actually allow us to grow sustainably. Yeah. When you do these things, like Celsius, FTX did, when you think about the technology, even Ethereum's technology, right? Yeah. Would Vitalik and his team build Ethereum any different if he was able to go back in time with the rearview mirror? Now, a lot of people would say yes, a lot of people, some people might say no, but the power of hindsight is understanding where your mistakes were. I'm of the opinion that a lot of mistakes that are being made right now in technology are not necessarily hindsight mistakes, but they're just not given the same amount of respect because it's going to take more time to launch a product to do the hard work first yeah to lay that foundation down and i don't think metaverses have taken the time to do that yeah and as a result i think there's going to be a huge fragmentation of them a lot of people don't even know what the metaverse standards forum is a couple of the companies that i've sat down with that have shared their metaverse world with me that they're building that they've done i kid you not millions of dollars into they don't even know what the metaverse standards is and then they look at me like i'm attacking their business model like why would we join this we're going to build it our way and it's like i, I get it yeah <laughs> but you're going to want an ecosystem where your digital products are able to tr go to other worlds yeah interoperability is yeah it's a necessity right well, now it's a I want mean, but we, we can bring up the fact uh well i i don't know how much okay so one of the coins that i'm i was really big on or st kind of still am is uh harmony one i like harmony one 
Okay. And they had this uh, sort of metaverse, NFT metaverse launch on on their token called Moonbase, I think it is. Okay. And it was, you could buy pieces of the moon and it's what shot the price up because of speculation of the coin up to like 35 cents per token. Yeah. And it was, I was like, oh, this is great, you know. But uh, they built a bridge, an Ethereum bridge, I do believe it was, or it, it might have been a Bitcoin bridge. And it's like a, a really easy place for hackers to get in and siphon money off. Got and it. And that's, that's what keeps happening to a lot of, a lot of these crypto companies. And you're saying with interoperability, if they have a bridge that's built that's able to like like siphon off money without them actually realizing it then if that's the the easiest way for hackers to get into something they're going to just keep doing it Un- completely and understood it's, which it's is the one that it's the the way that the north korean hacker group keeps getting into these things and stealing hundreds of millions of dollars so it's why i talk about my hope for things like the metaverse standards forum is that yeah. they lay the foundation for interoperability, which yeah. is kind of the heart of it because if there's a standard, yeah, then the bridges that are built yeah. are already built with the infrastructure knowing that security is paramount. Yeah. You know what I mean? For sure. This did not happen in crypto. Yeah. There was no standards forum. And if there was, it was long ago banded or n- nobody gave a shit. Yeah. So, but I will say this, our weave, yeah. definitely benefited from that kind of bump right of integration yep the announcement of meta working with our weave yeah. for to store to uh, do the perma web storage of yeah. the digital assets that are ultimately going to be hosted on instagram or available on instagram and yeah. facebook that's pretty powerful they saw Didn't a they huge have a, coin bump a, because of it a matic integration as well or was that just with instagram and this, that announcement was specifically towards Instagram and holding the digital assets themselves. Oh, okay. So it has nothing to do with minting or yeah. creating oh, okay. it gotcha. itself. Okay. It's the storage of the digital yeah. assets because that's what our weave does. Yeah. So it's interesting. But to final out kind of our transition from 2022 into 23, the new thing, or it's always been lurking in the shadows for a yeah, while. It's coming. Is AI. It's here. It's it's here in a big way because of how OpenAI launched. They did a really good yeah. job as far as a branding and PR type launch. Yeah. They're definitely getting kicked in the shins in a lot of ways right now. I don't think that they were as prepared for the hard questions as they were for the hype. Yeah. Well, you're talking about uh, for specifically chat GPT or their... Uh, OpenAI as a whole. Uh, or their image stealing software. <laughs> I mean, well, well, I guess it would be like, like collage. So is Mid Journey? Mid Journey, yeah, Mid Journey. I mean, you've so got, you've got those just AIs, but you're you're specifically talking about Open AI right now. I'm talking about Open yeah. AI because they've I been mean, at we'll, the forefront of media and news. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, there's there's, I'd say there's pros and cons, but yeah, there is. There's huge pros and cons. Yeah, I mean, humans are developing the artificial intelligence software. Yeah. And if humans are developing it, that means there will be some flaws. So if there's flaws in it, yeah. it's going to just carry over. You're saying I should develop it? That way there's zero flaws? <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> it would make more sense, wouldn't it? <laughs> but having said that, it's incredibly exciting where we're headed. Yeah. There is some scary elements to it, obviously. Oh, yeah. But this year is very much... Well, I mean, chatter you, is artificial intelligence. If you look around my space, it's filled with art that humans made. And you have that big thing, like a lot of artists are really, especially digital artists, storybook makers, uh, not graphic novelists, uh, people of that nature, like people in those fields really are kind of banding together against uh, AI digital art because it's, an amalgamation and a collection of all of these images, right? Whereas like if you were to have AI create you a song, it would have to take basically from either samples or like other like copywritten songs. You know what I mean? I do. I think there's... So it's, it's just interesting like to 
because if they did take from those songs they would have to license that music to create their own song yeah. otherwise the artist could sue them however with like visual art it's not it's not that way and it doesn't just reach out and say hey we took this element from this picture we took this element from this picture and then created this picture all together because of it you know what i mean i do and i think there's a huge opportunity right now in that type of accountability transparency privacy yeah safeguarding gatekeeping that there will be tech that is released that automatically tracks that whether it's through pixel and in, pixel injection some form of audio injection <laughs> yes I do know of a software company that is doing that very thing. Yes, in okay. full disclosure. Yeah. So when I'm talking, this isn't just an empty statement. I do yeah. know of a company. They have yet to release it. They do have some patents out for approval. They have a good amount of patents that have been approved. But yes, they are working on that very thing where it will be able to track not just AI, but humans taking anything that isn't rightfully theirs essentially and, and notify you if it does and not and that's the bigger point of it is yeah. that they will be able to notify the creator that this has happened and it'll give the creator the option to say okay i'm gonna cease and desist this but not with a letter no it's just gonna black out your screen or your use wow and that'll be crazy but then it will also give the opportunity to say okay you want to use it for this here's my terms for you using it yeah so again, it comes back to accountability and tra yeah. transparency. But yes, there is a company working on that very thing. I'm sure they're not the only ones, yeah. but they're well groomed and positioned to deliver something this tech savvy, if you will. And then you're seeing a lot of chatter. Microsoft spent 10, invested 10 billion. How much was it? So OpenAI's entire Into structure. OpenAI, but I've, specifically like ChatGPT, right? I feel like they've done something really special, not just in AI in, in a lot of aspects or how they branded or market it, yeah. but how they structured the company. It's been a nonprofit for seven years. Yeah. Okay. That means you don't have to generate a profit. There's a video and I'm going to see if I can find it of Sam Altman being interviewed in 2019 or 2017, something like that. And he's asked about profit and he's like, oh, we don't know when we're going to make money and we don't have to. Or nonprofit type thing. You know what I mean? It's like if any founder or any business person's like, wait a minute, you don't know how you're gonna make money. Yeah. That's these a bonfire right there. That sounds great though. I mean I it's mean, a luxury. He's, he's starting to pull it together, you know? So here's the thing. It it's really interesting to be able to create a nonprofit for seven years to then release a for profit product like Chat GPT. You know what I mean? These all these things are legal. I mean, there's so many things we can do within our legal construct that we color within the lines. We can find ways to launch things. Yeah. Because if you can get people to buy into a mission and you're a nonprofit, but then ultimately release for-profit products, it's it's pretty... I guess it all comes around the context, right? Yeah. It can be wildly positive or it could be wildly greedy slash negative. You know what I mean? So it just depends on the context of the situation. Yeah. My judgment is currently reserved on OpenAI. I don't quite know. My judgment on Sam Altman is still waiting in the wings. Don't quite know. Wait, yeah. we'll see, right? Th there's a lot of positives or negatives that could ultimately come from this, but we'll see. Yeah. But it's exciting, really exciting. Hey, thanks for uh, stopping by my place for... <laughs> for 2022, 2023, kind of like catch yeah. up and ramp up. Yeah, a wrap up of, of everything. That It was cool. It was good that we could finally sit down yeah man it's always you know? good to spend time with you yeah you too man even though it's already february but that's okay yeah but it's a month of love so we're sharing that love baby yeah the month black of history love. month too yeah. i believe so and just to throw this out there for any listeners uh if you're you you if you want to utilize or underutilize if you're underutilizing backyard space still reach out to Oh, adu.westcoast.com. ADU Even West. though we're not recording, yeah, we're not recording anymore there. in their studio anymore. Yeah. But yeah, no, they've been good people. Cameron's yeah. so awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's not like we won't go back there. It's just for time constraints and You don't got to convince reasons. me. Okay. No, no, yeah. but I love them. They've been nothing but good to us. Yeah. And I love sure. ADUs. Yeah. So this show has been produced by Vocal Visual. Yeah. And 
thank you to the celebrator for that intro and outro song. Yeah. I'm your host, Neil Alonzo, with my co-host, co-founder of Fort Brox, Mr. Brandon Don Heath. Brandon Don Heath. If you found value in what we're doing, please share this show with others. Who doesn't like to share value? Yeah. Like, comment, subscribe, all those wonderful things. If you have yeah. comments to say about anything that we talked about, please, we want to hear them. We're curious to see what your thought process is. Yeah. So, and you, and you finally got to meet the wizard cats. <laughs> and Whoa. until next episode, yeah, we hope you have a good day. Thanks. Bye, guys.